Welcome back. In today's session, we're gonna take you through a typical strength and power workout for us with climbing, hangboard, pull-ups, all the things that go into strength and power. Yeah, so this is also gonna be something applicable to most grades. We program in this session for us when we train, but also for clients from even, for example, V2 up to V14. So we'll tailor it depending on your ability, but we're excited to show you a typical power session. You'll also see that today we're tracking our session on these watches, Koros, uh, and we're just gonna do a power session so you can follow along and see how this data can help you train. So right now we're going through our typical warm-up that we do before every single session. Um, and we will put that in a different YouTube episode so that you can have a more in-depth um, look into what we do for a warm-up. So yeah, for right now, we're gonna do the rest of our warm-up and then we're gonna get into today's power and strength uh, session. The dip that I know, take time gone from the grips of day job. Sit sideways on the slips with a doctor. If time flies like a bird, shit may drop. She remind me of Baywatch. I was on a chase for the tail like Aesop, but now we on a chase at our place all day spot. I heard I gotta leave to go to work, but I may not. Believe me, I don't mean to be a meanie. That bikini got me losing my way. Ha. So just finished our uh, initial warm-up, which is like myofascia, hangboard, um, bands, and all these things. Now getting into the climbing portion of the warm-up, which I start super easy, like V0, and then work my way up. And especially for a power session, you want your whole body to be fully warmed up, your muscles ready to go when you do start the bulk of the power or strength exercises. So today is a strength and power session, as Alex said. So fundamentally, what are those things? Strength is the static ability to hold a position, like an isometric. Think about a hangboard and just using your fingers, strength. Now power is strength times speed, so being explosive, being able to pull on those holes. So a lot of the exercises we'll do today are on the wall. They're also on apparatus like campus boards. However, for V kind of one to three, four climbers, a really good introductory exercise in exploring strength and power is on the wall. So a strength one could be climbing really statically and pausing on holds. I'm sure you've seen videos of that many times. For a good power exercise, it could be getting on easier climbs with big safe holds and choosing to eliminate a few holds. So you have to pull dynamically, you have to stand up, you have to think with your brain, you have to be coordinated and catch the hold. So that's contact strength. We're gonna show you a couple of examples of that right now. So my intention of getting on this purple uh, B0 to one climb right now is to do an elimination. And for whatever, like, you know, for me, I think I'm gonna try to eliminate quite a few holds, but you don't have to go and only get to the top in two moves per se. So for me, I will try to do that because I think that's gonna be a really good warm up for me to get into the power portion of climbing today. You the first thing I think of when I wake up at 7.30 late for work So when I get there they look at me kind of dirty I look at pictures of us together and think I ain't worthy And part of me I've been known to get wordy This little birdie told me I should tell you Warming up those muscles, getting that explosiveness ready to like try harder climbs um, And whatever that is relatively hard for you So this next stage of the warm up is getting into some more More powerful and dynamic movement So I'm going to do a little bit of kind of like dinos um, big powerful moves if my feet are cutting, um, kind of like really activating those shoulders and the biceps. So come with me to do this kind of coordination, jumpy style climb. Still we're, I mean again, the grays are all relative. This is, um, I guess for myself, a little bit of a, still a warm up grade, maybe a medium warm up grade, so V4 slash five, but also coordination is not my strong suit. Um, but yeah, so it's a really good way to work, like warm up the leg power, uh, the big muscle groups and the biceps and everything to push me and propel me 
to the next hold that's kind of like higher up there. It's a really fun climb. Something to keep in mind when you're picking out more powerful boulder problems is usually more overhung and steeper angled climbs will be more bicep and finger intensive. So we're really going to um, work on that power and strength. I am going to pick out a climb in a roof um, and I want to still use my technique by keeping my feet on and stuff, but it's generally always going to be more strenuous on the fingers, even if it's bigger holds. So we're going to go onto a roof now and we're really going to get heavy into the upper body part of that power and strength. That was fun. That was a great power climb that I just did because the holds are a little bit more further apart. And so you have to be more dynamic going in between holds. And being dynamic doesn't mean you have to dyno. It can be your three points off, um, two points off or whatever. It's just that you're still jumping around and even if your other arm doesn't come off, that's still power. So, um, and being dynamic is in that realm of power and strength. So I just tried the blue, uh, or I just did the blue V5, V6. Um, I'm gonna jump into something slightly harder, V8 slash nine, this yellow climb in a roof. And I'm gonna keep on focusing on that like, more like raw power type of movement. Um, I think there might be a little bit of a jump in the beginning. So it's definitely gonna be more uh, relying on my arms. Right. Seriously. Nice. Come on. Ooh. Come on. Heel, not the toe. Mm. Nice. Come on, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Hey. <laughs> this hold is not very good. No, I can see. Not the prettiest, but um, nonetheless, there was uh, some power in there. Yeah, that's definitely a powerful climb. Could have been a little bit better with my footwork, but yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was a little bit easier for me. Nice work. So we're going to have a quick break from the video just so we can talk to you about Kero's watches and Kero's technology. So this is my dashboard, training.kero's.com. And obviously it kind of looks at all of the normal metrics of a good technology wearable. So your HRV, the recovery. So we had a good training session yesterday on rock actually um so say so yeah 27 hours to full recovery but you're good to go if you want to train again today over here you can see kind of my typical maxes my resting heart rate my max heart rate if i go for a really kind of long uh distance run with um a lot of elevation gain i'm probably pushing 200 which i have a lot um over 2023 but your normal amazing data that kind of allows us to to um look at recovery and also strain. The beauty of this though, is also we can plan in training. So the session that you're watching now, we recorded here with a strength board session. We've got my indoor biking, my strength and conditioning machines, um, uh, strength and conditioning with weight lifting. Yesterday, we were in Red Rocks now, had a rock session, but this is the session that we actually looked at. So if I click on this, it will take us to the metrics. So you've obviously got your kind of heart rate for the session, 
uh, going along here. I've cut off the side of the video um, or the screen a little bit, but this is strength session day one, project session. So from my my fascia release, as you saw, all the untagged bangs, scat pulls, single arm, that says scat pulls, um, lock offs, progressive hang boarding, density hangs, max hang session, all of this climbing warm up and warm up below. All of this was um, recorded for the session. So you can really kind of see the strain from that session. Um, and that's really good because say we're talking about clients or even ourselves and we have a project session or a power session, typically our heart rates aren't going to hit that high for that long. Now, if we programmed in that kind of session for a client and then they reported, hey, I'm, I'm feeling for my second day on, hypothetically, I'm feeling trashed. And we go and look at these metrics, metrics and the fact that they've had a, such a high heart rate the, high, the whole time. You don't really see this interval dips then it shows that they've probably not been hitting the right intensity. It tells us a lot of information. Likewise, in a power session, we could see the length, the duration, if they're going too too high, uh, or, and too hard for too long, or too easy for too long. Uh, it tells us a lot of information, which is really useful for programming. Back to the dashboard, we've got so much information. So you've got the intensity trend, this kind of orange in the background. You've got the, that's kind of mirroring this orange line. You've got the load impact, as you can see, and the blue is this base level fitness. We can obviously add even more metrics to this. We've got running. I've been cycling a lot more recently because I've tweaked a little calf. Um, I have a little calf tweak. But yeah, you can see all of this data, and this is why there's this dip uh, here in running, by the way. But you can see the intensity trend. So we've started doing much more training at the beginning of the year. We spent the last uh, part of the year in... Uh, England with my family, so our training dipped. But you can VO2 max, resting heart rate. Um, so yeah, all of this information is incredible. Now, we obviously only want to present to you stuff that's going to be beneficial. And we see it this being beneficial to ourselves and therefore uh, to you and our clients, which is why we're presenting this video. And you're going to be able to see future uh, videos about how to really kind of incorporate this into your training programs and to make the most of your sessions. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Check out the links in the description below to take you straight to Coros and they've given a nice discount code for accessories too. So I've been projecting this uh, 9 slash 10 screen climb and I've given it two tries now. Um, from the beginning. One try, my flash go got a hold or so from the end, which is great. Then uh, I did the last part, which is into two overlapping halves. Now I tried it for a third time, or so I guess tried a third time, but second time from the start. And I changed up my sequence in the middle, which I thought could be better, and it wasn't better. So now, after a rest, I'm going back to my original way and seeing if I can put it together. Plus, you got enough soul. I speak in my tongue goes a mile a minute. And mind your eye didn't. We already crossed paths before. Now you grin, and I don't even need a big ass smile. You got an attitude, but that's your style. Maybe if I could get up in your latitude somehow, then we could put the past back where it belongs for now. Oh. Come on. Come on, babe. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Wow. Oh, jeez. Oh my God. That was a powerful climb. Oh yeah. I feel like every day it's a little different, a little sweaty. Um, but yeah, that's uh, <laughs> today it was easy for me. And that's okay if some days your energy level or your, um, your output just isn't as good as like the week before. And that's totally okay and that happens and just to know it's normal. So say for example, somebody is going into a planned power session, strength and power session, and they don't feel great, what's some advice for you? So say you have a power and strength session planned for you that day. Um, if you're not feeling your hottest or you're not feeling great and it doesn't matter whatever the reason is, you can scale those grades or what you typically climb back a little bit and not let it get into your head too much. Like I 
went into the gym the other day and I could flash a V12. Inquiries are so subjective and sometimes they're easier and sometimes they're harder for the grader. Sometimes it's one climb could be easier for you because of your style or reachy or high, whatever it may be. But um, sometimes you just don't feel that great that day and it's totally fine to scale it back so it's more on like your effort level on the climbs versus the grade. So for me today, like this nine slash 10, felt really hard and usually I can go to the gyms and flash that grade and sometimes pretty comfortably and easily. So today it's just, that's where I'm at and that's totally fine and I'm still making a ton of gains. Come on. Top is a jug. Come on. Come on, you're almost there. Yeah. Oh, that last move for you is going to be hard. <laughs> Good job. <gasps> oh. oh, no. Do you think about anything in between these guys? The first move is a jump on this one. And obviously, I'm not really getting that tired. Um, versus the green one that I got into, even though the grade was a little harder than the green one, and it was more physical, I was getting towards the top when I was falling, so it demanded a longer rest. This one for me is a jump and a coordination for the first move, still powerful. Um, finger strength to actually hold on to the sloper. Uh, you have to squeeze a bit, but also have that core tension and be precise all at the same time. And so even though I'm not that tired, I still need to take a few second break to recharge the mind, chalk up, and then go again. You're the first thing I think of when I wake up at 7.30 late for work. So when I get there, they look at me kind of dirty. I look at pictures of us together and think I ain't worthy. And part of me, I've been oh. to get wordy. This little birdie told me I should tell you that. Nice. Good job. It was fun. That was a good climb. Not super, like, physical, like, all body, but physical in a different way, which... Again, with the coordination, you have timing, but then if you don't hit the, per the hold at the right time and speed, if it's too much, then you're gonna have to over grip. If it's too little, then you're gonna be too stretched out. So you have to have this like perfect balance of the strength, power, and timing. So now, should we go from preset climbs to some of the training boards? Yeah, let's go do some campusing. And when I do campusing or campus boarding or any of that, um, other type of training in my power and strength session. I don't want to get to it when I'm like fully taxed. You want, definitely want quite a bit of energy in your tank. So if that means your bouldering session is 40 minutes after warming up, that's totally fine. And the more fit and stronger, more powerful you get, maybe that can, you know, be an hour and a half at some point. But you really have to learn to listen to your body so that you're not hitting the uh, campus board or if your campus boulders when you're taxed because then you're just asking for an injury. So here we have a campus board and campus boarding or campus boulders, they're both amazing exercises for developing strength and power. The campus board here has um, really isolates our finger and our bicep and shoulder and lat strength all together. So when I'm campus boarding, I always like to stay in a half crimp position versus being in an open drag. And so when you're, if you think about it, if you're in a half crimp position, you can really push down further than if you're in an open drag, it's gonna be limiting to a certain um, height that you can't really get past. So really like if you, and it's okay if you hit something open hand and if you can adjust it to the half, that is ideal. And we've got a full episode on this. We do have a full episode also um, on our YouTube channel if you want more in depth techniques on how to campus board. We call this exercise I'm about to do max campus pull throughs. So you start on a rung, you go as high as you can on one of them or with one hand, then at the same time you're pulling and pushing, then you're gonna go as high as you can with the other hand and you always match at the end before dropping off. So I'm gonna demonstrate a max campus pull through and then I'll demonstrate how you can uh, make it a little bit easier so that you can then build up to it. Perfect. 
So the first one, I'm usually doing one, five, eight on these. Um, so like start if I start at one, then I go to five, then I can pull through to eight and match. But we haven't been campus boarding for a while. We were just on vacation over the holidays. So instead of just going back or trying to do right, like what I was previously doing, um, I don't want to get injured and I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to scale it back and to be safe, I'm going to start with, let's say one, four, six and a half. So whatever hand I lead with first, and then after I come down and I'm gonna do the other side, I always rest about 30 seconds in between so that um, I have potential to do the same on the other side. Other side? Yeah. Honestly? feels quite hard for me today. Um, I'm gonna take it what it is, and that is my max for the day, so I'm happy with that. So another way to make this exercise a little bit easier so that, again, you can build up to becoming more advanced in it is if your camp sport has rungs so the feet, you can put your feet on and do it. So I'll demonstrate what that looks like. And if you don't feel comfortable yet jumping on the last one to match it off the feet, then you don't have to. You can even start off, you can start a little bit um, easier than that. You could also do it closer than what I did with no feet on. And lastly, you can always make it harder by doing more than what I demonstrated. So like 158, 159. And, you know, really the limit is how tall the board is. You can always go up sizes as well. Um, unfortunately, this campus board doesn't have bigger rungs than this. So you can even do any of these campus board exercises on some campus board. They have huge jug rungs and sometimes they have um, this is kind of like a slopey jug, but it's not lined up with it, obviously. So you can do whatever size fits you. And then if I'm feeling extra good and I want to do a little bit more finger intensive, I might go to a smaller rung. So you can pick the size that's appropriate for you and for the exercise that you're performing. Another exercise I really like to do in the campus board is double bumps. And again, you can make it easier by putting your feet on or you um, can, so double bumps, you're going to have both hands at the same time. So you don't have to go you don't have to skip multiple in a row. So you can make it as easy or as hard as you need for you. And again, try to always stay in that half crimp position. Don't go open hand. And then again, you can do the same thing with your feet on. And then if you don't want to take your feet off, you can go back down and then go back up. So obviously you can keep your feet on the entire time. Another amazing tool for strength and power uh, workouts are doing them on boards as well, like a kilter board, a tension board, um, a moon board. So if your gym has boards and it doesn't necessarily have the best either setting or walls to do this all um, out on the boulders, then boards are also a great tool. Another thing I like about using, especially a kilter board, is campus boulders. So sometimes we put in for our clients and ourselves campus boulders rather than always just turning to a campus board. Two ways I like to campus boulders. If I'm working on more of a um, dynamic flow, I'll like kind of use my hips to help with momentum. The other way is a bit more of a static pull, which then isolates the biceps and also the forearms when you have to squeeze things. So I'll demonstrate both right now for you. So the first one, I'm gonna have more of a flow. The second time I do it, I'm gonna be a bit more static. So obviously there, I was using more momentum and swing to get it, which is still a really good exercise. Now I'm gonna do something where I'm using more static efforts, so I'm gonna be isolating the biceps, the shoulders, and the upper body a lot more. I 
I hope you enjoyed this episode on strength and power and you find it useful for you. And if you like this content and you want more, then make sure you click like and subscribe. But I also wanted to give a massive shout out to uh, the Climbing Collective. This gym is absolutely amazing. We're here in Longmont um, and it's new. So if you're in the area, come check it out. Okay, at the beginning of this video, we mentioned tracking the session on our Coros watches. In the middle of it, we showed the dashboard and what that data looks like. Now we've partnered with Coros because we see the value for ourselves and therefore for you, for our clients, tracking your sessions so you can monitor strain, monitor recovery, and therefore better plan your training in general. Obviously, if you want more information about how to plan your training, that's what Alex and I specialize in. So you can contact us at Rope Coaching. Everything we do is about optimizing your training and we feel like Coros helps us do that. So find out for more details in the description below. Click on the link. They've given us a discount code for you guys so you can get an accessory with your purchase. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll find it really beneficial. I've been finding it really beneficial for myself and Alex's training and I'm sure you will too.